to power in single phase AC circuits. Uh, lesson number six, this is part two, power in a reactive resistive circuit. So most AC circuits contain reactance and resistance. Let's take an electrical motor for instance. Because it's coils of wire and it's using magnetic fields, it's going to have an inductive reactive component. But the wire itself has some resistance. And it's the resistive component that is actually going to do the work that's required to spin the machine. So most AC circuits contain reactances and resistances of some kind. Reactive power taken by the circuit does no useful work. We've, we've mentioned this a few times now. And um, it's an important aspect that we, we need to remember that reactive power, and I'm putting a, a big red box around it because it's, it's something you're going to need to remember. Reactive power does no useful work. No useful work. Um, inductive reactants can be counteracted by adding capacitive reactants. Remember, we said they were at 180 degrees from each other. So, remember the 180 degree thing? Because inductive reactances were at 90 degrees from unity and capacitive reactances were at 90 degrees the other way. So by reducing the amount of reactive power, quite often we just add some capacitive reactants and it counteracts the inductive reactants. And if we manage to do that by reducing the reactive power, it's called power factor correction. And we'll introduce you to a little bit of that in the uh, third part of this lesson and then the next lesson uh, lesson 7 focuses totally on power factor correction. So here we have a power in an RL circuit or a resistor and inductor circuit. So let's have a, uh, a quick look here. We have an iron core. We have a copper wire wrapped around the iron core. And, of course, the copper conductor is uh, made up of a cylindrical conductor. And here are the cross sections are through it. Now, believe it or not, um, the electrons on a um, conductor tend to travel around the outside. And this is called skin effect. It happens at 50 hertz but you get more and more skin effect as frequencies go up and they become more and more obvious. The reason is that we can get some things called eddy currents um, floating around in here, which actually make the conductance of the outside of the conductor more conducive. Therefore, you get more current flow on the outside of it. So just an interesting thing to note. Um, if you've got nice, even distribution of electrons through your conductor, there's no skin effect, but for most conductors, you actually do end up with this skin effect. So coming back now to our inductor, we're going to have resistance in the actual wire itself. So the wire is going to offer some resistance, but the coil of wire is going to create this um, this magnetic field around the outside and that's going to create an inductance because it's constantly expanding and collapsing probably for most of us at 50 times a second or 50 Hertz. So here's an example of skin effect, and we've simply uh, got a cylinder of conductor, and as current, you can see the little arrows for current, are flowing through the conductor. 
you actually get a voltage drop across the conductor. I'll just draw an arrow. So, because we get this voltage across the conductor and represented by these blue arrows, they also create these eddy currents. So, if we've got pure DC, you can see here, looking on our conductor, pure DC, we don't end up with any eddy currents. It's only AC that causes the problem. And if we have AC resistance, and at low frequencies, we tend to get this shape. So you're getting a fair bit of conduction across the whole conductor. But at higher frequencies, you get this happening where you're actually only conducting on the outside of the conductor. So if you ever go have an opportunity to um, go into big power stations or high voltage installations, you'll quite often see the conductors they're using, you think they're pieces of pipe. Well, they are pieces of pipe. Quite often a piece of aluminium pipe for high voltage. They look like this. So why build a substation switching yard with all these conductors and have them solid when most of the current is gonna flow on the outside anyway? So you'll find in a lot of high voltage substations, you'll see a lot of the conductors are actually hollow because they know there's this skin effect and why bother having this area in the middle here if the power or the electricity or the current's not going to flow. So let's look at the power waveform for an RL circuit. So again here, we've got an inductor. Let's look at the circuit on the right hand side. We've got an inductor and we've got some internal resistance in our inductor for the wire that's, that's used to wind it. So um, that's a practical inductor. get my eye to go. So there you go, practical inductor, because it has internal resistance. And because we've got current and voltage being applied to the circuit, you can see over here on our uh, little graph diagram, here's our fundamental, our voltage phasor, over 360 degrees. We have a plus direction and a minus direction and time on the horizontal. Again, if we simply multiply the current by the voltage is going to give us the power. So we just, any point on the curve, we instantaneously multiply the voltages and the currents, we're going to end up with this power curve that you can see drawn here in orange. And again, We've got a phase shift between voltage and current. But this time you'll notice the voltage in the negative component is a different quantity to that in the positive. So here's the negative component, here's the positive component. Because this is no longer a sine wave, we can't use RMS. So for power, we quite often use the average power because it looks like the shape of a sine wave, but because we've got a big bit at the top and a small bit at the bottom, it's actually not a sine wave. Its form factor would not uh, equal root 2. So 
we would have to use average power to represent what is going on. But you can see here, because we actually have a resistor in the network, RL, over here, then for part of the cycle, for the positive part of the cycle, the resistor is having some effect. So here we've got resistor plus inductor. Down on the negative part, we've only got energy from the inductor. So we end up with this lopsided wave and we end up with average power and that average power is caused by that resistor. That's why we have it. It's the resistance in the circuit that's actually consuming power, either to produce rotary motion if it's a motor, or heat, or whatever the, the action of the particular device is. So the power to voltage current in an LR circuit can't use RMS, we have to use average, and the only actual average power being used is the power in the resistor. The power in the inductor, in this particular case, the magnetic field collapsing and reducing. Here it's feeding back into the circuit, and here it's supplied in storing into the field of the magnetic field. So what about power now in an AC circuit? Now, if you remember from our previous lessons, that the capacitor basically has no internal resistance. So we've added a resistor just for the example. So in our example, our resistor is here just to make sure we're comparing apples with apples when comparing capacitors and inductors. So the first one we looked at was an inductor and a resistor in series with an inductor. Now we've got a resistor in series with a capacitor, but we've had to put in a separate resistor in this particular case. Now you'll notice we've got a phase shift in the other direction. It's not 90 degrees. It's something less than 90 degrees because this resistor has caused a little bit less phase shift. But again, average power is all about that resistor. It's the thing consuming the power. The capacitor is just storing, then releasing, storing, then releasing energy. So again, here on the negative part, we're feeding energy back into the circuit. Up here on the positive part, it's both the resistor using some power plus the inductor storing some power. So the resistor is storing some power and that power is getting used and I'll draw it as a little wobbly line because it's probably getting, in this particular application, it's getting used as heat. So I'll draw it as a little wiggly lines representing heat being emanated. But the inductor is storing energy in the magnetic field. And then that energy is being fed back in here in the negative cycle. The result is the average that's running through here. And again, that average is just the power only being used by the resistive component in the circuit. So true power is dissipated by the resistor only. That's the important thing to get out of this little diagram. The capacitor takes power, but only takes reactive power. Power that it stores and releases, stores and releases back into the system. So now we've seen the difference between capacitive and reactive power. Again, they're 180 degrees different from each other, but they're having the same effect on this average power, and the only real power being dissipated is from our resistance in the circuit, that which is in phase.